I have always had a feeling, a belief, that this continent was placed here between the two great oceans to be found by people from wherever in the world who had an extra ounce of desire for freedom and an extra ounce of courage in order to pick up and leave friends and countrymen and so forth and come to this country. We are, this nation today, is an example of the brotherhood of man. You know, listening to that quote uh, from Reagan about America's providential role, um, David Bonson, the thought occurs to me on that, not only the importance of keeping America strong and free, but when America goes wrong direction, I think we've learned down through the years that the rest of the world goes wrong direction. And I think we're seeing some of that or we have seen some of that. What do you think? I agree completely. And it's the city on a hill concept that President Reagan loves so much. It cuts both ways. We can either be an example to the world for good or an example for bad. It brings the rest down. We have to lead. There's an economic idea here. There's a moral idea. When, when America is pushing an idea of productivity, growth, work, the world sees it. Other continents grow. South America followed North America's suit, right? The European model has now gone the other way. America's chasing Europe. It mm. needs to be the opposite. Yes, it does. You look at tax-cutting presidencies, JFK, Reagan, Trump. They all have something in common. Prosperity followed without inflation. So the whole world is ganging up on Liz Truss, and they're being stupid about it. And I think it's because she wants to displace the establishment. But, David, they ganged up on Liz Trust. They ganged up on Trump mercilessly. I was there. They ganged up on Ronald Reagan mercilessly. What is up with that? Every time a conservative pushes the freedom agenda, the establishment has to come down and just try to kill him. Just knock them down time and time again. Why is that? I don't think it's fundamentally political. I think it's philosophical for these people. If they can get away with promoting the idea that economic growth comes from consumption, the Keynesian idea that first and foremost we need people out there consuming, then they get away with teaching a central planning version of the economy. It's necessary for people to try to steward and manipulate people's consumption. Supply side economics, what Liz Truss wants to do, what you guys did in the Trump administration, Reagan before that. And you're right, JFK too, a Democrat. Mm -hmm. I, I love you getting that in. And even Production a, little, a little smidge of Bill Clinton. A little bit. With welfare reform for with workfare, and he did cut the capital, capital gains gain tax. taxes. Capital gains taxes. So mean, investment, corporate, smidge. and income. It's uh, not about tax policy. It's about production driving economic growth. When you have, when you teach, not you, but these faculties, all right, and I know they're very distinguished. I'm just having a bit of fun here. Do they ever teach the incentive model like Art Laffer would argue, if you tax something more, you get less of it. If you tax something less, you'll get more of it. So it is still taught, but it is increasingly crowded out. Now it's flipped, so it's much more a lecture versus tutorial, so they're learning more about normative issues rather than about the basics of supply. What do you mean normative incentives. issues? Uh, issues like values social values oh. things that maybe don't just don't just have to do with straight economics but rather have to do with yeah. norms about inequality or Is race that like totalitarianism gender? versus freedom <laughs> and i i dare ask who wins that in the classroom but that's the point is ironically they lose that argument too they don't have the moral high ground or the economic high ground because the moral high ground is with work it's with productivity it's with growth and that's what i think is so tragic that the academy has lost but again it comes down to this a love affair with central planning they can't concede. Where anything. has it worked? Where has it worked, yeah. Tyler Goodspeed? You're probably asking the wrong person because I would, I would answer it's a null set. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. I, would, I would add to that that I think that David's right to point out that there's a philosophical point here. It's also that there's, there's, such a, there's a conceit among academics. Uh, right. and, and I say this as someone who's spent a fair amount of time around them. There's a conceit among academics that there, there is some way to divine a way to organize society better in a more optimal way. He's throwing us off the set anyway. You guys are terrific. Absolutely great stuff. Tyler Goodspeed, overeducated but fabulous. And David Bonson, the best market guy I know. 